welcome back dear friends now we are going to discuss few more basic terminologies okay so we saw ambidented ligands also okay now we will discuss here next hour uh, that is fifth uh, basic terminologies uh, that is say chelating ligands what about that see chelating chelating ligands so what will be this uh, chelating ligands here chelating ligands are those okay it is regarding with uh, polydentate ligands okay so what will happen say some polydentate ligands okay some polydentate ligands bond to central metal atom with their donor site to form a close ring okay so polydentate ligand they are bonding with central metal atom to form a close ring okay that we can call it as a what chelating ligands okay so see here how we can represent this and uh, see chelating ligands how we can represent beta as you know beta suppose uh, this oxalato ion okay oxalato ion as you know this oxalato ion when it is bonded with this central metal atom okay bonded with this central metal atom forming as like this see they are trying to form a ring here okay so o and here what say 2o4 2 minus yes or no means like that they are bonding okay so here whatever this we can call it as a chelating ligands what we can call it as a chelating ligands whatever this oxalate ion it has a property to form a chelating ligand and what will be here forming and we call it as a here these are what chelates what whatever forming here we call it as a what chelate so see here one of the important most uh, part of the regarding this chelating ligands or uh, chelates is what chelates are more stable chelates are far more stable than other simple complexes okay chelates chelates are far more stable okay more stable than other than other simple complexes okay than other simple complexes and what are the stability of these chelates okay can be explained on the basis of entropy can be explained on the basis of what entropy change okay so how uh, we can say as a entropy change suppose here it is as you know it is a metal and here what and here uh, suppose uh, bidentate ligands are there okay here ligands are there okay now suppose here what first bidentate ligands are there which beta bidentate ligands are here and here also bidentate ligands are there okay now what will happen when this bidentate ligand is replaced by monodentate ligand then automatically entropy of that metal ion its or we can say entropy of that complex is increased so increase in entropy therefore what beta yes therefore there that chelates are what more stable that chelates are what beta more stable okay so here and consequently what will happen yes consequently entropy also will increase understood so it is very much important okay and we can say that chelates are what that chelates are more stable okay now see here whatever we are discussing uh, next part so we will discuss here next part also concentrate on this next part see regarding this chelating ligands one more important part uh, we can arrange here okay so, so see here whatever that one more important part as you know uh, you studied in that organic chemistry also okay 
Okay, what you studied? Whatever chilates. Okay, whatever chilates means whatever chilates which form five or six membered ring are more stable than the other chilates. Okay, means whatever five or six membered ring. Okay, five or six membered ring are more stable than four or seven membered ring because in five or six membered ring there is a what a zero angle strain okay now like that also here in this chelates also whatever their five or six membered ring chelates are more stable okay now now we will see discuss here whatever fifth okay sorry here our number six is oxidation number okay oxidation number now see oxidation number how we can uh, calculate regarding your this uh, complex okay oxidation number of oxidation number of central metal atom central metal atom okay so you we can write here the charge present on central metal atom in the complex is called as its oxidation number charge present on central metal atom we can call it as a what oxidation number okay so uh, we will take here some oxidation number also to so say uh, suppose k4 yes k4 fe cn6 suppose it is one of the complex okay so we have to take here what we have to take here oxidation number so k4 here as you know potassium is what plus 4 oxidation number okay uh, potassium sorry potassium is what always plus 1 okay and cyanide is what minus 1 okay and we have to calculate the oxidation number of this iron here so here 4 uh, potassium so that's why here what will happen plus 4 plus here iron we don't know so x it is plus cyanide is what cyanide yes cyanide is what each each cyanide ion is minus one so here six therefore minus six is equal to zero if there is a charge over here then we have to write uh, instead of zero here okay so beta x is equal to what obviously plus two therefore iron here oxidation number is what plus two understood so suppose if you are considering next second uh, we will discuss here first of all now suppose second example okay so see second example cu nh3 4 okay and so four. so what will happen here say we have to calculate the oxidation number of this central metal atom okay so copper we don't know so we can call it as x so ammonia as you know here what yes ammonia per koi charge nahi hai. so here what zero okay plus as you know sulfate is what yes sulfate is what beta minus two sulfate ion so equal to minus plus here minus two is equal to zero therefore beta x is equal to what plus two therefore whatever copper oxidation number here how much plus two I hope you understood this now see here suppose if you are considering okay next uh, say uh, third we will take as example of third in oxidation number iron beta here iron okay iron then uh, edta iron then edta and here what minus and then we have to calculate the oxidation number of this central metal atom so as you know in EDTA, so basically you must know or we already discussed whatever iron, okay, whatever EDTA, okay. So EDTA is what? Ethylene diamond tetraacetate. So I did uh, acetate, okay. So on this acetate, as you know, total charge how much? 4 minus. So here, X plus, we don't know what is the charge on this uh, central metal atom X. If we that's why we are considering as a what x plus so edt how much minus 4 is equal to this minus 1 therefore x is equal to what beta yes plus 
3 you will get here answer okay now suppose okay so see here we will discuss as you uh, in case of uh, like that compound you can say fourth one k3 fe yes k3 fe cn6 k3 fe cn6 so here also it is our central metal atom so plus three because each potassium charge plus one so total three are there so plus three plus x plus minus six is equal to zero therefore x is equal to what plus three understood so these are very much important so like that we can calculate oxidation number understood i hope you understood this all Okay, so we will uh, move towards uh, next. Okay, these are what our oxidation number. I hope you wrote uh, in your notes. Okay, you have to revise this frequently. Okay, now we will discuss what is the coordination number. Okay, coordination, coordination number. Now pay attention carefully what is the coordination number it is what see what is the coordination number it is the number of coordinated bond with the ligand with central metal atom in that complex compound in that what complex compounds so we call it as a what coordination number whatever say whatever Number of coordinated bond which of the ligand forms with central metal atom. So see very much simple coordination number. So I will write here what uh, complex say Pt okay Pt NH3 4 2 plus okay. So coordination number of means how much how many ligands okay how many ligands Ligand means what here ammonia is ligand okay how many ligands are directly bonded with this central metal atom we call it as a what coordination number of that complex so here coordination number of this complex how much yes total four because this ammonia is what monodentic ligand suppose if you are considering a second example so you can write a second example also see here K4 is K4 Fe Cn6. Okay, so here beta coordination number how much is how many ligands directly attached with this center metal atom? 6. Understood. So, third we can uh, write here third say as like this Cr C2 4 thrice. Okay. Cr C two O four thrice. So beta here how much coordination number? Yes, coordination number here six. Why six? Because say, because what will happen? Whatever this Cr, okay. Whatever this Cr, your central metal atom, means basically this C two O four is what bidentic ligand. So it will join. So it will join as like this. Oxalate. Okay. Here what C2O4 OX OX is what C2O4 OX is what sorry OX is what your oxalate ion oxalate we can write like this also OX means it takes two donor sites that's why it is what bidentate ligand so here total bidentate so therefore for three how much six therefore coordination number how much regarding your this complex here C2O4 thrice is six because it is bidentate, so 2, 3 is a 6, therefore coordination number is 6. Now see here, 4th one, okay, so 4th one here, Pt, okay, Pt, here Dmg twice, 4 minus, okay, so what will be the coordination number, yes, coordination number is what, beta 4, because this Dmg, dimethyl glyoxam is what, Dimethyl glyoxam is bidentic ligand. So bi means here 2 into 2, 4. Therefore, coordination number how much here? 
Yes, coordination number how much? Here, 4. I hope you understood uh, this. Understood? See. Now, we will discuss here a uh, few important points regarding uh, coordination number. Okay, so see here. With the coordination number, we can predict geometry and hybridization of that complex also okay geometry as well as hybridization say as like this we can uh, write we will make one chart no uh, issue say coordination number i am writing in this cn okay now uh, hybridization sibida hybridization okay now see here geometry also I am writing understood coordination hybridization with uh, geometry see so coordination so coordination number two the hybridization is what yes sp and geometry we can write is a linear okay when coordination number four Okay, at that time two possibilities are there. Sp3, so Sp3 is what? Yes, tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. And regarding your coordination number four, we can write Dsp2 also, means hybridization, we will get Dsp2 also. So at that time what? Yes, square, planar. Okay. Square planar. Now, when coordination number is six, yes, when coordination number six. So at that time, here also what two possibilities that is as like this sp three d two and d two. Okay, d two sp three. Okay, sp three d two and what d two sp three. But here geometry for both it is what say that is octahedral octahedral means beta this uh, we already discuss okay uh, we already learned this you already deal this uh, whatever geometry and hybridization also in our topic that is chemical bonding and molecular structures okay so better you know and uh, with the help of this it is revised also understood so it is very much uh, basic information uh, regarding this coordination uh, number okay so now we will discuss most important part of your your our basic terminologies are over okay now one of the most important part we will discuss no doubt, whatever we, we are going to we are discussing here, we, each and every point is important. Okay, and we have to keep in mind, we have to remove frequently notes, we have to work on that. Okay, practice is very much important uh, for this topic, means every topic. Okay, say that is uh, your next point the effective atomic number. So you can write as a heading. Yes, effective atomic number in short, in short, E A N effective atomic, effective atomic number. Okay, so see here effective atomic number. So, effective atomic number, so as uh, you know, we effective nuclear charge and all okay so effective nuclear charge so effective atomic number it is related to our atomic number that is z so we will uh, directly concentrate on this very much important part here uh, what is the formula of this e a n is equal to so write down beta z minus oxidation number plus 2 into what coordination Okay, 
so as you know z is what atomic number there z is what atomic number o n is what oxidation number c n is what coordination number this thing you know you know better okay so with the help of uh, one example we will solve we will calculate the effect of atomic number of that complex ready so see here effective atomic number suppose here if you will take one complex fe cn6 fe cn6 3 minus so here as you know here you means uh, you must calculate here oxidation number of this z you know z means atomic number of this whatever complex they give with center metal atom that uh, atomic number you must know z is uh, atomic number so if we at atomic number how much 26 coordination number yes here how much 6 total and you have to calculate charge also okay means here oxidation number also we have to calculate so see we will put up here z is what yes 26 okay minus oxidation number so if we see in 6 3 minus okay so we can write here as a x plus minus 6 is equal to minus 3 therefore x is equal to what with a plus 3 so minus 3 plus 2 into coordination number how much 6 so beta how much you will get answer here yes you will get answer here how much 35 means yen whatever effective atomic number of this complex okay how much beta yes how much here 35 now whatever stability of this complex can be explained on the basis of yen so see here the complex in which yen of the central metal atom is equal to the atomic number of the next inert gas is more stable. Okay, it's very much important this statement the yen, yen of the central metal atom is equal to the atomic number of the next inert gas is more stable. Suppose if you if we will take here a uh, second example, means mostly we will get here what nearest nearest or next what inert gas atomic number so uh, regarding this 26 so what will be the nearest beta inert gas yes okay as you know inert gas is here okay so see here atomic number 2 okay here 10 18, 36, 54, and what? 86. Okay. Now, nearest atomic number with this 26 or 36 means near about we uh, got here. Okay. So, we will discuss uh, uh, another example. Fe, yes, Fe, CO5. Okay. Fe, CO5. So, can you calculate here? Whatever EN of this, yes, uh, calculate with the help of this formula. Okay, it's, it is easy. So, iron, yes, Z is what beta 26 minus oxidation number here. As you know, this carbonyl, or we can uh, in general carbon monoxide also we can call. Okay, but uh, whenever we are getting a name. Whenever we are dealing with names, so what will be the name? Pentacarbonyl, pentacarbonyl iron. Okay, pentacarbonyl iron. Okay, zero. So if there is a no charge on this carbonyl. Therefore, here what iron oxidation number in this complex zero. Plus two into coordination number how much five? Yes, so twenty six plus this ten thirty six means it is a stable means yen for this above complex is what 36 i hope you understood i hope you understood this uh, all part understood so we will deal here one more uh, example okay 
so say uh, one more example we will discuss ready so see one more example uh, regarding this k2 tk third uh, we can uh, write a third example for ea in k2 pt cl6 so k2 pt cl6 okay so atomic number of platinum is what 70 they may already uh, give you okay so atomic number of this k2 pt cl6 platinum uh, whatever atomic number is how much is yes, 78 so can you uh, put up the values so z is what z is here 78 atomic number minus oxidation number okay what will be the oxidation number here beta c how we can calculate k2 plus 2 plus x plus minus 6 is equal to 0 therefore x is equal to what 4 understood so z atomic number 78 minus 4 Plus two into how much six? Okay, then obviously, ah, uh, what you will get the calculation here? Yes, eighty six. For sure. So here, how much, beta? Eighty six. This much uh, very much ah uh, means uh, like that. It is very much easy. Okay, easy to understand this effective atomic. Number. Okay. Now we will discuss. Okay. Now we will discuss next part. See, writing a formula of an coordination compound, coordination complex. Okay. See, chemical formula of coordination compound. How we can write this? Okay. Say uh, basically, uh, these are there are some rules. Okay, writing the formula of complex or writing the formula of that coordination compound. Okay. Say writing writing the formula of Complex, or we can say what coordination compounds. So here, first is what cation is written first, followed by anion. Cation is written first, followed by Is followed by anion. Okay. Second, second, uh, you can write in square bracket complex in square bracket complex in square bracket in square bracket complex is written first. Complex is written first, then central atom, then ligand, then central metal atom, then ligand. Okay, like that uh, we have to follow order. Okay, okay. So we can write is as a Means whatever ligand we have, we are going to write that follow. We have to order like this: anionic, then uh, neutral, then what? Cationic. Okay. Ligand in the following order: first anionic, neutral, and cationic. We already saw that. Okay. Now third, we can write. If two ligands are of same type, then they are arranged in alphabetically order. So alphabetically order like this. You suppose ammonia and water are there. Okay. So as you know, this N H three is what we call it as a yes ammonia, and here what H two. So in this 
topic of our cordage come from water for water uh, we we call it as a, yes we call it as a what aqua we call it as a what aqua okay so followed by c here ammonia and aqua so among these two which one uh, we have to write first okay we have to write first say this NH3 and this H2 suppose these two ligands were present so here was starting with N and these are what starting with A so first preference due to alphabetically for this aqua so first aqua we have to write then ammonia we have to write understood so like that here understood so these are what writing the formula of the complex of coordination compound complex or coordination compound okay so these are what we can say as a general rules okay now most important part uh, we are going to discuss in here that is uh, IUPAC nomenclature of what coordination compounds okay see whatever uh, now now we saw uh, whatever uh, rules for writing chemical writing coordination compound or that complex these are general rules so it may varies now whenever we are going to discuss again IUPAC nomenclature system some changes uh, it will occur so see some uh, the IUPAC gave some recommendation also so how we have to write again this IUPAC nomenclature of inorganic coordination compounds so say we have to write IUPAC nomenclature of coordination compounds Okay, IUPAC nomenclature of coordination compound. In that beta rule, you have to write some rule. Rule first, you have to write cation is named first followed by anion. Cation is named first, yes, followed by followed by an iron okay now rule 2 we can write a rule 2 okay rule 2 we have to write naming of ligands naming of ligands okay suppose if you are considering here anionic Anionic ligands. So regarding anionic ligands, some ligands, some anionic ligands which are ends with ID, okay, okay, and uh, some ligands, some ionic ligands that are ends with different, okay. So that also we will discuss here. Some anionic ligands which ends with ID and that ID is replacing okay, so see here we will write that ID is replaced by O. ID is replaced by O. Simply we have to write O. Suppose uh, some anionic ligands uh, I am writing here. Okay, suppose I will write first this NH2 minus. So NH2 minus what beta? Amide here. Okay. So in this coordination compound, how we can write? Okay, simply amido. This some somewhere this IDE or somewhere this only E is replaced by what? O. Okay. So like that. Say, uh, suppose here I will write uh, Cl minus. Okay, suppose say Cl minus. 
then what uh, we are writing generally is chloride now see here coordination name of this chlorido okay chlorido understood means simply whatever here instead of ide suppose if you are considering this e is replaced by o then it is also okay understood so amide is what amido chloride is what chlorido means only e is replaced by here o okay suppose i will write here br minus so br minus is what yes bromide as you know what we are uh, writing then here what bromido okay now regarding your cn minus cn minus is what as you know cn minus what cyanide but little bit change not a cyanido here what simply cyano we can call it as a here exceptional as exceptional case s2 minus is what yes yeah, s2 minus is we are writing what sulfide yes everyone know this sulfide ion but whenever we are writing coordination compound standard name we have to write as a sulfido okay sulfido now n3 minus is what nitride ion so simply what we are writing yes nitrido nitrido okay so these are uh, some anionic ligands in that uh, e or we can say ide is replaced by o ide is replaced by o okay now we will discuss some another anionic ligands okay some another also on ionic ligands that we will discuss here with their examples okay so say which are those examples we can consider here so pay attention anionic ligands in sim some anionic an ionic ligands okay ligands ends in okay ends in ite or ate are replaced by this are replaced by e replaced by this e by o okay so as you know beta suppose as uh, see here this what is c o o minus here and this c o o minus so what we call here oxalate ion yes oxalate ion but this e is replaced by this o then whenever we are writing coordination compound at that time we have to write oxalato understood oxalato so this oxalate is converted into oxalate whenever coordination compound iupac nomenclature we have to write so you have to follow this all rules they very much important okay See, suppose if you are considering this as the first or uh, second example, okay. So, second example, see sulfide, what beta sulfide. So, sulfide is what is so 3 2 minus, as you know. So, we can write in what sulfide 2, what sulfide 2, understood. Now suppose third if you are considering acetate 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 as you know CH3 CO minus 
acetate so name what will be the name here acetate what be the acetate i hope you understood this okay now suppose if you are discussing carbone okay carbone so carbone has like this co3 to minus is what carbonate carbonate okay now fifth suppose if you are considering fifth nitrite what we do yes nitrite so as you know nitrite is what in o2 minus so we can write as nitrate nitrate okay understood this very much important and easy okay afterwards we are uh, going to discuss how we can deal with uh, iupac nomenclature first you have to concentrate on what your rules okay you have to keep in mind these all names understood with the formulas also chemical formulas okay now some special condition we will discuss regarding neutral ligands okay so say some special condition so neutral ligands are named as it is their usual names some special names are given to some neutral ligands special names some special names given to yes given to neutral ligands so we will discuss that which are those like this as you know this say it is your uh, what which ion beta Okay, which I am here is by pyridyl by pyridyl compound. Okay, it is what by dentate. Okay, by pyridyl H two O aqua. Okay, see neutral ligands H two O. We call it as a what water, but here what yes. Wow. Ammonia, but here we are writing what as amine or amine, amine or amine. Here what? Ano, ano is what? Nitrosyl, what nitrosyl? Ano two somewhere we are writing what ano two as a nitrile, nitrile. Okay, and this bond in O two we are writing what? We are writing as a nitro. See the difference. You have to keep in mind this difference. Okay. Now some cationic ligands are named by replacing suffix I U M. Some cationic ligands also we will discuss here. Some cationic ligands. Okay. That uh, in that what will happen by placing suffix in cationic ligand by placing a suffix what I U N in cationic ligands in some cationic ligands we have to by placing. I U M suffix, I U M suffix and prefix. As you know, suffix and prefix. Where you heard this? Yes, when you heard this in your organic chemistry, I U P C nomenclature. Okay, prefix and suffix. Understood. So I U M C. As you know, we call it as a this as a what ammonium. 
replacing ammonium basically it is a derivative of what ammonia and water so ium by placing ium is what ammonium okay this what no plus nitro nitrosilium nitrosilium okay now we will discuss here okay these are what some basic criteria or basic information and very much important information whenever we are writing IUPC nomenclature of coordination compound or we can say complex okay now we will start actual naming of complex ions okay say what better naming of complex ion naming of naming of what complex ion so in the naming of complex ion Ligands are written in alphabetical order followed by names of central metal atom with its oxidation number in Roman numerals. Okay, this is a very much important part we have to concentrate whenever we are naming of any complex or coordination compound. Okay, so see, like this, very much important in the naming of ligand. In the naming of ligands, okay, right ligands are written in are written in alphabetically alphabetical order followed by followed by name of central metal atom with its with its oxidation number in in roman numerals in roman numerals it is very much important Okay, in Roman numerals. Okay. If the complex part contains two or more same types of ligand, okay. So this we can call it the first, second. If if the complex part contain, if the complex part contains Okay, two or more than or two or more same type of ligand, same type of ligands. Okay, then di, tri, tetra, etc. We have to use for example c for example we will write here suppose this cobalt ns3 tri cl3 is there so how we can write here yes cobalt ns3 thais and cl3 is there so how we can write uh, use this okay Contain two or more same type of ligands are there. Yes, here two or more than same type of ligand here also and here also. So at that time you have to use this as a prefix. Means say alphabetically we have to arrange. So these are what chlorido and this what here ammine. So first alphabetically yes ammine only here will come. Okay, but how we have to write this? Yes, try, try. Amine, triamine, and what? Trichlorido. Okay, triamine, trichlorido, 
story do we have to write? This is very much important. Okay. And one more here remarkable uh, point regarding this one. We can considering as a here as third point in the naming of complex ion. If the complex part contains more than one type of similar polyrhythmic layer, okay, more than more than one type of similar similar polydentate ligands when it will come or it is similar polydentate ligands are there okay then okay contain more than one type of similar polydentate ligands will come then at that time we have to use as a prefix this trees and tetrakis these trees and tetrakis we have to use is use so it is very much important okay so we will discuss uh, example so say example suppose I, have, I will write here okay if we is if we okay C two four thrice three minus. So I will write here example if we C two four thrice three minus. So how we how I will I will write here yes I will write here trees because three are there to trees oxalato trees oxalato I will write simply. Understood. Trace of Zalato, I will write there simply. Understood. I hope you understood this all. Okay. Suppose here, uh, as you know, ethylene diamine is what? Ethylene diamine is what? Bidentate ligand. Oxalato, as you know, bidentate ligand. But here three are there. Suppose EN is three. Okay. Suppose if you are considering here in your thrice in one in any other complex, so at that time how we can write here is yes. trace ethylene trace ethylene diamine. Understood? So like that we have to use. So it will vary in the case of polyrhythmic ligand we have to. Use which trace tetragon, but if we there for monorhythmic ligand, we have to use what prefix ditri tetra. I hope you understood this all. If any doubt will come, then uh, you can share. Okay, you can feel free to ask anytime. So, you remove notes also frequently, you have to revise. Okay. Like that uh, one one content we have to cover perfectly, accurately and neatly. You have to write in your notebook. So take care, stay safe and uh, stay home. Thank you.